Yes, back again for a history video. I enjoy these here research, it's really fun. Today, in North Belfast, to do a wee bit of history, Cliftonville. And where am I? Well, I'm in a place called Clifton Park Avenue. And the reason why I'm here is because this here was the first home of Cliftonville Cricket Club. First known as Enfield. What am I doing with cricket? Right, here we go. Cliftonville Cricket Club was partly formed by Mr. John McAleary. He was a man from Raff Ryland. He came to Belfast to live and carve out a career for himself. So we're going to talk quite a lot about him in this here uh, video. Anyway, he was one of the founders of Cliftonville Cricket Club in 1870. First known as Enfield. Um, whatever happened to him, they sort of they fell away, but they reformed again under the name Cliftonville Cricket Club. So, as I say, they started off here. Clifton Park, it was originally called. It's now called Clifton, Clifton Park Avenue. And then, after a few years, when they reformed, they moved to Cliftonville Cricket Ground, which is our next stop. Similar to Clifton Park Avenue, this here was a former cricket pitch as well. Um, it's now another 3G Council Gaelic pitch. But that there's from Cliftonville originally started playing football. Anyway, stories. The story goes that John McAleary got married and they headed over to Scotland on his honeymoon. And the wife and he seen a game of football. And he was engrossed by it. He was like, my goodness, this is brilliant. I want to bring this back over to Ireland. Hi, yeah. yeah. right, lads. <laughs> Keep are slow out there, I'm doing, I'm doing a wee video. I've got wee wains here from North Belfast, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, um, so what, what John McAleary did was he organised an exhibition match when he came back home from Honeyman. I played at the Ulster Cricket Grounds, which is no longer cricket grounds neither. That's three cricket pitches in Belfast that are gone. It's now called the Olydia Playing Fields. I'm not going there today. It's way over the other side of town. But he brought over Queen's Park and Caledonians and they played a game. So loads of people came to watch the game and like McAleary, they were all infatuated by this. And McAleary thought he was going to strike with the irons hot. So he went and he put an ad in the local paper looking for uh, people who want to come and play football. So September 1879, John McAleary helped form Cliftonville Football Club. Within a week of him looking for players, he had them playing their first game and they played their first game at Cliftonville Cricket Club, which used to be here. So McAleary realised that Cliftonville wouldn't last long without opponents so using his contacts in the cricket and world he um, talked to other clubs and they also formed football teams uh, one of them being Knock Cricket and Lacrosse Club there you go other cricket clubs all got involved in this here and the interest was so good so uh, just everybody was like this is great um, there was so much interest in it that McAleary and Cliftonville then became heavily involved in the formation of the Irish Football Association. Indeed, McAleary became the secretary. There's a wild lot of McAleary stuff here. I think I could do a vlog on him alone, to be, to be perfectly honest with you. So, McAleary also played for Cliftonville. He was a captain and the right back in the early days. So anyway, Cliftonville played in the first Irish Cup final in 1881. It was a game they lost to Moyola Park. Moyola Park have won the Irish Cup once. 1881. They're from Castle Dawson, they're up near me. I might do a wee video on teams like Moyola and I think it'll be quite interesting. Anyway, in the second season, Cliftonville again got to the final 1882. This time they lost to Queen's Island. That's another vlog I'm going to do. Very interesting stuff. Um, I'm not getting the Queen's Island too much because then I'll ruin me, me, me content. So, at the third time of asking, three years in a row, 
Cliftonville got the final Irish Cup, 1882-83. They played Ulster FC, another forgotten team. I'll do a wee bit of research on them again. They beat them 5-0. So after three years of the Irish Football Association Cup, Cliftonville won their first major trophy. My next stop on this trip is Solitude, the home of Cliftonville. And while I'm walking there, I'm going to tell you a story that not many people will know. Right, we're ready for this. There was no league in, in Ireland in the early days. They just played sort of cup competitions and friendlies and all that there. Right, we hear this. The FA Cup, the English FA Cup, was being played. Cliftonville and a number of other teams entered the English FA Cup. The English FA Cup had Scottish teams in it, probably had Welsh teams, but anyway, it had Cliftonville in it. Cliftonville played in the English FA Cup in 1886-1887. They were knocked out by Partick Thistle 11-0. Oof, that's a tanking. Now, this is history now. This is a one-off. This is FA Cup history. Just cross the road. Cliftonville played Linfield in 1888 in the English FA Cup on Christmas Day. It is the only FA Cup game that has ever been played on Christmas Day in 1888. Cliftonville and Linfield. So there you go, Cliftonville and Linfield have English FA Cup history. Bet you no one knew that. And for the record, Linfield beat Cliftonville 7-0. So, we're coming up to solitude here. I have never come in at this side before. I think the ground's all closed today. So I'll not really see anything. But anyway, we're in 1890. Cliftonville's home became solitude. going to focus too much on the actual sort of building of uh, solitude and stuff today. Um, I'll maybe do that in a later video. But what I will say is behind me there is a big like waterworks, big water area. And there was a building in the middle of that there called Solitude House. It was one of them sort of old sort of homes back in the day. And uh, that's where the name Solitude got its name from. They took the name from Solitude House. So we go, let's get this right here, we go to 1890 now, Cliftonville have been playing in cup competitions, there's been no league. The first meeting of the Irish League took place on March the 14th in 1890. The Irish League is the second oldest national league in the world and the first Irish League was comprised of Clarence, no idea who they are, Milford, no idea who they are. Old Park, I've heard of them. Distillery, Glen Torn, Ulster and Linfield.
Right, I'm here in, here in solitude. I love getting into grounds. Interesting, fascinating. I'd love to get over to that old stand there, but that's condemned, you can't get near it. So let's talk about Cliftonville. Cliftonville's first title win was a shared title. In 1905-106 season, this, them and Distillery finished the season level on points. They played two playoff matches against each other, but they couldn't be separated. They drew both games, so they decided that they share the title. So Cliftonville's first title is only a half title. Irish League behaviour. It was in the 1909-10 season when Cliftonville first became outright champions. Unbelievably, this was to be their last league title until 1997-1998. So, after they won the league, they didn't do much after that there. So between 1910 and 1978, the Reds didn't, they didn't win much. They won a few trophies. They won a County Antrim Shield in 1925-26, a couple of Gold Cups in 1922-23, and 1932-33, um, a few Belfast City Cups, but nothing to write home about. There was no Irish Cups, there was no leagues. And this sort of coincided with the death of John McAleary. John McAleary died in December 1925, and Cliftonville fell away after his death. Cliftonville finished bottom of the league no less than 22 times between 1937 and 1968. They were an amateur club. They didn't pay their players. They couldn't compete. All that changed though in the early 70s. Cliftonville became more professional. They started paying players and they started building things up. And this led unbelievably to what is their last Irish Cup win in 1979. They won the Cup in 79 with goals from John Platt. I've chatted to him before in the vlog. What a man. Mike Adair and Tony Bell. They won 3-2 at Windsor Park in front of 18,000 fans against Portadown that day. The Reds won the County Antrim Shield as well that year and the following year they won the Gold Cup securing the 3-1 win against the Blues. After this, the owners disappeared again until the 90s. Marty Quinn took over Cliftonville and he built up a great team. They won the league in the 1997-98 season. Like, the, it's hard to believe this. Like, Cliftonville were one of the founders of the Irish League. And for most of the Irish League, they've been anonymous. But when they've won things, they always stand out. I remember when Marty Quinn won the league. Probably will remember it more because he then came to be the Korean manager. In 1999, Cliftonville made it to the final of the Irish Cup. Players were getting all suited and booted and everything. And then the phone call came in to say they'd been kicked out. Cliftonville were expelled from the Irish Cup final as they had played an ineligible player in an earlier round. Ported Down won the Irish Cup in 1999 without playing a game. Sorry, without playing the final. So what about Cliftonville in Europe? We'll chat about their first European victory. I like doing that. Touching on Europe's good. So in 2007, they played Dynaburg of Latvia in the UEFA Inter Total Cup. They drew one all at home. The home game was played at Windsor. And then they went out to Latvia. And against the odds, they secured a 1 0 victory through a Mark Holland goal. That was their first victory in European competition. The Reds have gone on to win two further league titles in 2012, 2013, and 2013, 2014, under the guidance of Tommy Breslin, who sadly passed away a few years ago. They continue to have success. They've won the County Antrim Shield, and last season they won the, the League Cup. Before I talk about it. I'll finish this vlog by saying this here. I haven't mentioned religion at Cliftonville. And... I will here, I'll just mention it a wee bit. I don't want to say it wrong. Basically, Cliftonville are known mainly as a nationalist Catholic team due to the area they're in. Cliftonville is a very nationalist area around here and the Ardoins next to it. But this didn't happen until the 70s. 
before the 70s and with the likes of the cricket clubs and all Cliftonville sort of they didn't it wasn't about that and it was, I don't want to say it's wrong it's not about that now but the way it is now is they are known as a Catholic team in the Irish League and this just it, it simply came because of the troubles and more and more Catholics moved into this area Protestants moved out of the area and the sort of club it, it changed now, I do know quite a few Protestant Cliftonville fans and Cliftonville are quite a progressive club in that their respect in that the club know their sort of roots and they try and keep away from all the religious stuff they call out their fans whenever the fans are misbehaving um, Cliftonville is the original they're the first official club in Ireland John McAleary was a pioneer I'm sitting in the John McAleary stand named after a man who is officially credited with bringing football to Ireland this is Cliftonville anyway look if I've got any facts wrong in this here video which I probably do because I've done all my research using Google Wikipedia Cliftonville website um, Irish League supporters forums and they're maybe not all right but look if you like the video same as always like subscribe share leave a wee comment um, if I've got something wrong or if I've missed out something significant uh, I want to do another video on like sort of stands and stuff like this the, the original stand here is from 1949 um, it's got a bit of a history to it and it's it's falling apart now so it has the roofs made of asbestos and all sorts um, apparently it's a brilliant stand they sit on but I can't even get up near it I just finished the video off there with Joe the goal Gormley crossing the ball in and me banging a header in from two yards. That's the best way to end any video I'm from buzzing.